Hey everyone, it's Jason here at Tonology Middle East, and today we're going to talk about the Carl F. Boucher Monero Ferrer Fro. This is a new watch that was announced early in the year at Baselworld, but before we talk about the watch, I want to talk to you a little bit about the brand itself. So Carl F. Boucher is actually an independent brand, and they were founded back in 1888. The company is based in Lucerne, Switzerland, and was founded by Mr. Carl Frederick Boucher. One of the nice things about this brand is that it's still in the hands of the founding family. The other interesting thing about this brand is that they're actually one of the few manufacturers in the world to offer calibers with peripheral rotors. What is a peripheral rotor? Well, let me flip the watch over and kind of show you. So, this is actually an automatic watch, and if you're wondering where the rotor is, it's actually there on the circumference or the outermost uh, bit of the caliber. You can see the name stamped onto the the peripheral rotor in this case, and if I move the watch around, you can see it moving a little bit. There you go. So, there are a number of advantages to peripheral rotor calibers. The first is obviously you can see the entire caliber. The other benefit is also because the caliber sits um, around the rest, of the as the rotor sits around the rest of the caliber. It doesn't require any additional height because traditionally, with uh, normal automatic calibers where the rotor sits on the top, it adds a bit of height because you know the rotor itself um, it will have a bit of thickness to it. With this, you get the advantage of um, being able to see the entire movement, and you can design a fairly slim caliber because the rotor, as I said, doesn't sit on top, but rather at the side of the uh, rest of the caliber. Brands also kind of, um, you know, this is one approach to designing shorter, uh, sorry, thinner calibers. The other approach that's quite popular with brands is um, putting micro rotors onto the caliber itself. So there's quite a few brands that do that. Um, so you get the self-winding advantage, you can also see quite a bit of the movement, but the challenge is you can't actually design calibers with more traditional, uh, you know, design and architectures. The rotor kind of gets in the way of having long bridges like this, and um, so there are some limitations there with that, whereas with a peripheral rotor, you can see here the, the entire caliber can be seen, and it's got quite a beautiful architecture here. CFP actually first got into peripheral rotors back in 2009, and the first caliber uh, that they did of this sort was called the A1000. The company then stuck to kind of their guns and uh, basically, I think, put in about four years of research and development to design the A2000, which is a variant of, uh, sorry, it's not a variant actually, it's, it's what's in this watch, but there's actually an interesting story behind the A2000 itself. So when CFP was kind of designing the A2000, what they decided was that they were going to use it as a base caliber to design other watches and other movements around. So what does that mean? Well, so what you see here is basically the A2000, and in this case, you get um, time, running seconds, and date complications. And what they've done is they've called the caliber A2050. Now, if they want to build a GMT, for example, or they want to build a chronograph, what they might do is... Uh, build in those complications and call that caliber the A2100 or 2200 for example. I'm not 100% sure how they're planning to kind of um, go about this, uh, whether they're going to basically integrate complications within the caliber itself or if they're just going to use a sort of modular approach, but uh, basically the A2000 is quite central to the brand's plans for the future. CFP is quite focused on precision and accuracy, so they've paid quite a bit of attention to the caliber and specifically the balance wheel. What this watch offers is a free breathing balance spiral, uh, balance spiral and um, in this case the length of the hairspring is never altered to adjust the motion of the balance wheel. What you have to do here is, or rather what CRP has done here is on the balance wheel on the four kind of spokes they've actually positioned pivotable flyweights and those can be um, those can be kind of uh, moved around a little bit to alter the inertia and the um, uh, this, the, the basically the way the balance wheel works. They've also been careful careful about um, how the how how the weights have been put onto the balance wheel itself. So you know they don't put root outwards, and that means that there's less uh, less um, turbulence and friction, which means that the precision of the balance wheel isn't going to be affected because of uh, drag. The rotor itself here is made from steel and it's welded together with uh, heavy metal wolfram. That's basically tungsten. And uh, what they've done is then coated the um, coated the tungsten, I guess, with the PVD coating to give the kind of look that you see here. 
the movement is a cost certified chronometer and you know that's again as I said earlier precision and uh, is a big part of what CFP is and since the company was founded they've done a lot of watches which have been cost certified chronometers this caliber again is a cost certified chronometer and um, in terms of um, in terms of um, specifications it beats at about 4 hertz I think that's an improvement on the A1000 which ran at about 3 hertz and you get about 55 hours of power reserve it's also a hacking movement so if I pull out the crown you should be able to see the balance wheel stopping there you go so just push it back in so overall it's a pretty uh, feature rich caliber uh, there's quite a bit of finishing done on it as well you can see Geneva stripes across uh, all the bridges uh, it's quite a few jewels as well in view and you know even the crown wheel and the ratchet wheel have been finished quite nicely there's a small logo of uh, well the CFP logo is on the kind of top bit of the um, ratchet wheel overall it's a nice looking um, uh, caliber I like the design and architecture that you can see and um, you know there's not a lot of hand finishing on this watch but again at this price range I think um, that's fair given what what you're getting in terms of you know again the design and features so with that said let's take a look at the rest of the watch so let me just give this a bit of a wipe what you have here is a pretty nice looking everyday watch you know it's a 40.8 millimeter steel case and in terms of thickness it's about 11.3 millimeters thick it's not very thick at all and you should be able to get this under your shirt cuff or suit cuff or you know put it on with formal clothes without any challenges at all watch offers a three part uh, sorry the watch case is three parts um, you've got a high polished bezel whereas the main case here on the side you have satin finishing the top of the lugs also have satin finishing and a slight bit of edge here with um, high polish the case back is again high polish and uh, you've actually got a few details about the watch on the case pack itself so you've got the watch resistance here the reference number it says chronometer there and the name and uh, it says proto because this is basically a prototype watch so let's turn the watch back over now in terms of um, the dial you get a uh, this this particular reference offers a matte black dial and it's got applied indexes all around it's got double uh, indexes at 12 o'clock which is quite nice you've got the running seconds counter at six o'clock you've got a date uh, aperture at three o'clock and there's Dauphin hands there is no um, loom material on the hands or on the hour indexes which means you know if if, um, if it's a bit dark and there's uh, not enough light um, you're gonna have to break out your torch smartphone's torch and um, shine it on the dial or just look at the time on the watch uh, on the uh, phone itself that's not a huge deal in fact um, a lot of watches that are more classy tend to lack loom material so you know it's not too big of a deal the one thing that I I will kind of uh, draw your attention to is the date aperture it's very easy to read like the rest of the dial but uh, I'm not a huge fan of these apertures especially when they kind of sit at this position at 3 o'clock because they kind of um, make the balance uh, make the uh, dial look a little bit off balance because you know you've otherwise got some beautiful symmetry you've got like of course the name over there on the top along with the city of founding and, and the founding year got the running seconds so those two kind of balance each other out but then you've got the date aperture at three o'clock and you've got nothing on the uh, nothing at the nine o'clock position so it's ever so slightly off balance I know that most people prefer to have date wheels rather than nothing at all so my suggestion would be to kind of almost um, and to any brand almost would be to always have the date aperture at six o'clock if, if it has to be on the watch itself again this is a small quibble that uh, you know it's something that um, that bothers me every now and then when I kind of look at the watch I tend to look straight at the um, date aperture so the other thing I've noticed is the um, sapphire crystal on this watch um, it's quite reflective I think even now in the video you should be able to see uh, I'm sure you're seeing quite a few reflections and I suspect that's because there's only anti-reflective treatment on one side of the of the crystal I think to to get away from that maybe you know CFP should seriously think about adding um, anti-reflective treatment to both sides because it can be quite distracting when you're walking around or you're just looking at the watch and you've got like reflections of uh, stuff around you and there but other than that um, no real complaints or comments the I love the look of the dial overall it's um, you know the applied indexes look fantastic 
um, there's not a lot of text on the dial and it's uh, just a nice elegant watch that you can wear every day on the alligator strap you know it, it kind of looks a little bit more dressy um, but I've been wearing this watch on uh, a polo shirt and trousers and I think it looks fanta uh, you know it looks fantastic you don't always have to kind of use this combination for formal wear only if you wish you can also get this watch with a bracelet but I think the bracelet adds a bit more weight to the watch and kind of takes away from this otherwise uh, very attractive um, uh, looking dial speaking of dial um, you have a couple of color options available besides the matte black that you have here there's also a uh, white lacquer dial and more recently I think CFP has also introduced a um, sunburst blue dial which looks fantastic in pictures so you know I'm hoping to kind of have a look at those in the near future um, let me put the watch on now and give you some wearing impressions so you've got a nice um, butterfly clasp let me just get it on very quickly So there's the watch on the wrist now. Um, I have 7.2 inch wrists and I think the watch looks uh, just about right on my wrist. You know, it's not too big, not too small, just about right. Um, you can see here the watch doesn't sit very high. So you can, as I said earlier, you can get this under a shirt sleeve or a uh, suit without any issue at all. And uh, the weight is really good. You know, the weight, it, the watch kind of sits well on the wrist. You don't feel the weight at the top. It's um, nice and centered. This leather strap is really comfortable and it looks quite nice. The one thing I have noticed is the uh, with the butterfly clasp, it's kind of chunky. You can see it here. It kind of raises a little bit of um, you know up. And what happens is when you when I kind of rest my wrist, the watch moves around a little bit. You can see that. Um, I tend to wear my watches ever so slightly loose because um, if I put them on uh, too tight or you know just about right, I tend to notice that my wrist uh, will end up sweating so I prefer wearing watches loose and um, when I do that I've kind of noticed the watch can move around the way to get around this of course is to make the watch a little bit tighter on the wrist but again um, I prefer not to do that for myself beyond that um, no real uh, no real issues to speak of the watch uh, looks great uh, it's been getting a lot of favorable comments from friends and uh, colleagues who've seen it over the last few weeks and in terms of retail pricing, I think the watch is um, very fairly priced. So in stainless steel, um, with the strap, you get it for about US dollars 7,700. And considering the overall quality design and the fact that you're getting a pretty interesting caliber, which uh, uh, which not a lot of brands offer, you know, with the peripheral rotor, I think it's really good value for money. You can also get this watch with a uh, rose gold case and in that case setting the price becomes about eighteen thousand six hundred dollars so you know it's quite a steep uh, markup when you go for a precious metal case I honestly think that uh, the stainless steel um, case is the, uh, is the way to go and I like the black dial but I think you know so far the the white looks fantastic and uh, you know again I hope to see that um, again very soon um, but uh, yeah I think either with the black white or blue dial you've you've you've, you've just got like uh, a really nice watch to wear on a day-to-day -day basis so that's about it me uh, that's about it for me for this review um, if you have any comments or questions you know do drop them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can if you found this video useful please do like and share it and as always please do subscribe to my channel so you get updates when I post further reviews in the future that's it for now guys thanks for watching